Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's July 10th. Are you growing parsley? I do, but I generally only plant the flat leaf variety since the curly leaf parsley is used mainly as a garnish. Parsley is a member of the umbelliferae family, which includes celery, carrots, dill, cilantro, and the poisonous hemlock. Here's today's brevities. On this day in 1838, the botanist Asa Gray resigned from the Wilkes expedition. Gray was frustrated by all of the delays. In addition, Wilkes wanted to work with Americans only, while Gray recognized that the work could not be done unless European herbaria and experts were included. Gray established the science of botany. It was Asa Gray who said, Natural selection is not the wind which propels the vessel, but the rudder which, by friction, now on this side and now on that, shapes the course. Today in 1949, a 79-year-old botanist, Dr. Melville Thurston Cook, his wife, and their pilot were rescued by an Air Force helicopter after a week in the Alaskan wilderness. In newspaper accounts, Cook reported that they survived on 90 dozen eggs after their plane was forced down in the rugged Brooks Mountain Range. As luck would have it, the 1,080 eggs were aboard the plane as cargo. Cook shared their ingenuity with the world, telling how they had not lacked for variety, enjoying fried eggs, boiled eggs, poached eggs, scrambled eggs, and omelet. Naturally, when he wasn't eating eggs, Dr. Cook was collecting specimens. During his prime, Cook had gone botanizing with Nathaniel Lord Britton and Elizabeth Gertrude Britton in Puerto Rico. He'd also worked with Henry Allen Gleason at the New York Botanical Garden. And back in 1977, Ethan Allen and Elvin McDonald of House Beautiful gave a presentation called Decorating with Plants. Keep in mind that this was three decades before Instagram. Otherwise, McDonald would have no doubt shared photos of the over 300 plants in his apartment. In the newspaper promotions, McDonald was quoted as saying, Take a pill if you will. I say, take a plant to cope with everyday stress. And on this day, in 1983, a newspaper headline read, Rare Plant Halts Roadwork. Turns out, a $15 million highway widening project near College Station, Texas, was stopped because it threatened a tiny, rare, and unusual orchid plant. The Spiranthes parksii, also known as Navasota Ladies' Tresses, because it grew along the Navasota River. The plant is only six inches tall, with white blooms. It was first discovered in 1945 and described by Donovan Stewart Correll in his 1950 book, Native Orchids of North America, North of Mexico. It became the 54th United States plant species to be classified as endangered. And in 1988, British plant explorer Roy Lancaster revealed that a thriving black market for plants was threatening rare Chinese orchids. In the same way an art collector might buy stolen works of art underground, elite plant collectors are the wealthy clients of orchid smugglers. Lancaster shared the plight of Paphiopedilum armeniacum, which was discovered in 1980, but was 100% harvested from the world by 1983. In just three short years, the plant had gone from discovery to presumed extinction. In Unearthed Words, here's a poem by Theodore Rethka called Transplanting. Rethka said he wrote the poem from the perspective of a very small child, all interior drama, no comment, 
no interpretation. Watching hands transplanting, turning and tamping, lifting the young plants with two fingers, sifting in a palmful of fresh loam, one swift movement, then plumping in the bunched roots, a single twist of the thumbs, a tamping and turning, all in one, quick on the wooden bench, a shaking down while the stem stays straight, once, twice, and a faint third thump. Into the flat box it goes, ready for the long days under the sloped glass, the sun warming the fine loam, the young horns winding and unwinding, creaking their thin spines, the under leaves, the smallest buds, breaking into nakedness, the blossoms extending out into the sweet air, the whole flower extending outward, stretching and reaching. Today's book recommendation is Perennial Garden Plants by Graham Stewart Thomas. Hailed as a classic from its first publication, this book describes over 2,000 species along with practical information on planting, seasonal flowering, color, propagation, and cultivation, as well as on the origins of plants. Of this book, Graham Stewart Thomas said, I have tried to be truthful, concise, and at the same time appetizing. Appetizing because it is my desire to encourage you to grow these lovely things. The smaller ones among them may be called garden toys, while many of the larger kinds are plants of great personality. Today's garden chore is to plant your shade trees wisely. Today's chore was featured in the South Bend Tribune on this day in 1952. Here's what it said. Don't plant your shade tree so that it shades your neighbor's yard instead of your own. Consider your plantings as a permanent investment in beauty and comfort that is worth real thought. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today in 1966, the New York Daily News shared the TV listing for 9 p.m. It was a repeat episode of Bewitched, starring Elizabeth Montgomery and Dick York. In the episode, a rare black Peruvian rose robs Samantha of her powers and she breaks out in little green square spots on her face. Aunt Clara remembers that the rose was used to drive the witches out of Peru, and she sends Darren off to gather items for the antidote. Luckily for Samantha, Aunt Clara said that she could only get the sickness once. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener, and remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org and be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join the Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.